fight. Uh, the spiritual battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. So, uh, in the spiritual sense, even if you have a fight and you win that fight, it really is meaningless. On the other hand, if you have a fight and you lose and you feel bad about it, that's also meaningless too. It, it's not about butting heads with one another. It's not about arguing your way so that you can win over them with your good arguments and knowledge. It's a spiritual battle against principalities, against evil spirits that have dominated some people, that have caused them to not receive the truth as it is. And so we pray. And you might wonder, why is it the seven weapons against the enemy when you find only six pieces of armor in the Word of God? Prayer is what holds it all together. Prayer is the effective weapon that God has given us. Why? Intimacy with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That communication with Him causes us to see the reality of the spiritual battle that we are faced with each and every day. And God wants us to be victorious in Him. God doesn't want us to be losers. God doesn't want us to be down and out. God wants us to arise from the ashes. God wants us to arise from our failures and flaws. Let his grace cover you. Where sin runs deep, grace is warm. Amen? He, he comes to the rescue. He lifts us up. And he wants us to fight the battle. If you have an enemy, there needs to be a target. And it's definitely not people. Some people say, well, it's, it's all because of the Republicans. Or it's all because of the Democrats, or it's all because of, you know, who and who. It's not about people, friends. It's about Jesus. And then when we lift Jesus up, everybody will, will come to bow their knee before him, for he is indeed Lord and Savior. So remember, as we read here in verse 13, when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. That's why we need to put on the full armor of God. But has that day of evil come? Let me ask you just a very plain question. When you look at the world around you, do you think the day of evil has come? Do you think the day of evil is already here? I believe that the day of evil has always been here. But now it's been more accentuated because it's no longer hidden behind closed doors. Now it's being flaunted as this is who I am. This is me. So you have to accept me for who I am. Which leads us to the thought of what Paul says to us, which is the first thing. Put the belt of truth around your waist. And today we want to talk about that truth. Because the world in its evil desire to deceive you, will pump you with a kind of truth that is really not true at all. What's it called? It's called relative truth. Relative truth doesn't stand uh, in, you know, doesn't stand before, uh, it doesn't last for eternity in so many words. Relative truth, let's say in the 1920s, Something was true back then. But now in 2023, it's no longer true. It changes. Changes like the winds and the waves. It changes with the times. Something that was bad in the 1970s now is something that is applauded. That's relative truth. And what people will pump into you is what's good for you is good for you. And what's good for me is good for me, so let's not fight about it. That's what relative truth does to us. It, it causes us to not think about the absolute truth. Absolute truths are statements or beliefs that are true for all people at all times, in all situations, and cannot be changed. Truth eternal is absolute truth. Truth eternal. Now, when you think about a Roman soldier, and I believe that's where Paul gets his idea about this armor. When you think about the belt, 
And nobody thinks of the belt as a weapon. Uh, but I, I believe it is. Because without the belt of truth around our waist, everything is going to be flying around and there will be no order. You need to have the order. How many of you have ever seen the movie The, the Gladiator? Right? I mean, it was one of those movies that I watched when I was very, very young, and I thought, wow, that's a pretty amazing movie. But if you think about it, uh, the, the gladiators would wear uh, weapons uh, on, on their belt. Uh, it would keep them. Uh, and if you've ever seen uh, you know, people who lift heavy weights, they always have this waistband, a, a belt, very thick ones, because that's the source of strength. You, you get your strength from that, that belt, your back. And your, and your loins. And so when Paul talks about the belt of truth fastened around your waist, it's very important to start with absolute truth. Then the question you may have is then, what is biblical truth? Well, what does Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. See, truth, Jesus is the truth. Everything that Jesus spoke, everything that Jesus did, it comes purely from truth. And that's why we read about his life even today, after 2,000 some years, and it still brings us life, brings us joy, brings us peace and hope. Because that's what truth does. It doesn't change over time. Think about it. When, when Peter said, Jesus, who do people say I am? And who do you say I am? And Peter said, well, you are the son. You are, the, you are God. Son of the living God. And Jesus was pleased with the answer. It's like, yes, God helped you to know this in so many words. God allowed you to know this. It wasn't you. And Peter's, you know, pretty chuffed with himself. You know, like, oh, yeah. Praise the Lord, right? But then soon after, he says, when Jesus says, I'm, I'm going to die, he's like, no, you can't do that. Get behind me, Satan. Do you think Jesus pulled Peter aside after he said that and said, listen, you know what? I think my words were really too harsh on you, so I just want to apologize for my words. Do you think Jesus said that? The Bible doesn't say it. But I truly believe that Jesus would never apologize for his words because his words are true. His words are spirit. There's no need for apology. He's just saying what he sees. Amen? Amen? And that's why when we come to absolute truth, there is no denying that we would be influenced by it. Either you accept it or you have to reject it. Sometimes the, the light is so bright when you've come out of a dark room and you see the light, it's like so, so dark, uh, so shiny, uh, and you just have to deal with it. Saying with absolute truth as Jesus speaks his words to us tonight, as he speaks to us through the word, by the spirit, we cannot help but respond to it. And a wise person will receive the truth. What does John say? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now I've been thinking deeply uh, about that verse. If you abide in my word, Jesus says in John 8, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, verse 31 and 32. When Jesus says the truth will set you free, there are two aspects of truth that, that you need to receive and understand. Free them in two aspects. See, when the truth of Jesus Christ is girded around our waist, like a belt, as Paul has said, then it will sustain us to stand until the very end. This is very important in warfare. Whoever stands until the very end is the victor. It doesn't matter how it went on. Whoever stands to the end will be the victor. And the truth girded around our waist. Jesus Christ himself, the word of God, the living word of God, that is girded around our waist like a belt. The truth tightens 
the correct spiritual muscles in us to withstand the onslaught of deception and temptations that come our way. It's the truth that gives us that strength to stand, to not go back, to not fall over, but it gives us that truth. Why? Absolute truth is dependable, reliable, and eternal. Truth eternal. So look at Jesus when he is tempted after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He fends off the enemy by it is written, the truth of God's word. It is written three times. The, so the truth tightens our spiritual disciplines. So we're like marathon runners, for example. I've never run a marathon, so it's very difficult for me to give an example like that. Maybe one day. Uh, but when you train for something, you need to let go of uh, superfluous things. You need to let go. I mean, who goes on a marathon with like a backpack with like 40 pounds of snacks in it and a uh, load of water, you know, and you have your, you know, everything. You just, you're wearing all your jewelry and wearing like 10 bracelets. You don't do that when you're on a marathon, right? See, the disciplines help us to take off all that easily entangles. The disciplines, as we focus on the truth, it helps us to tighten the bolts where it needs to be tightened and loosen those things that need to be loosened. Everything is put into order when we are aligned with the truth of God's word. That's the beauty of truth. Some people say, oh, Living on the truth is, is just too stressful. There's so many things that I can't do. It's too restrictive. Well, think about a world that has no laws, no speed limits, no stop signs, no, no traffic lights, no police, no government. It would be mayhem. There are parts of the world today who are suffering from these kinds of uh, situations where it's just free for all, and gangs are abducting people, wanting money, you know, and all of these things. It would be crazy, but praise God, at least for us here, we live in a land that has a government, police, stop signs. Have you ever thanked God for the electricity that allows for traffic lights? We ought to, praise the Lord, thank you Lord, for having those, because it gives us order. And when you drive underneath the speed limit, you don't have to worry about if there's any like blue lights following you. You're perfectly content because you're driving under the speed limit going your way. Do you know it's a huge privilege that we can get from point A to point B? And there are paved roads and that we have all the means to get there and come back. This is, this is God's blessing to us. Truth holds everything in its place and grants us the order. Now, the other aspect of truth is truth that when it's truly applied to our lives, it liberates us from all the doubt and what ifs of life. Because you trust, like the song, because I know he holds the future, life is worth the living, just because he lives. That is the truth. He lives. He holds eternity in his hands. He's the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, and takes every care of everything in between. And that we can trust him. And you might wonder, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? When you apply God's truth, Jesus Christ, in your heart, all of those things just disappear because it's no longer important because you've relinquished that to the Lord of truth himself. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Savior. So the what ifs go away and it clears a path for clarity to abound. No confusion. I love that about truth. It's clear. I mean, if I said to you, what is four times six? Anybody want to answer that question? 24. It's not 23, it's not 25. Right? 
it, it's, it's what we have understood as truth. It's a promise between you and I. But the promise between <laughs> God and us, the covenant stands because of Jesus. And when we have that truth girded around our waist and it is a belt of truth that we never let go. And by the way, there are some historians that say Roman soldiers would never, never loosen their belts in any situation. That we never let go of that truth. It is girded around our waist and it helps us with our spiritual disciplines and then it frees us to love God and to love neighbor. If you do not have freedom, you, you don't have the choice to go from point A to B to C to D. You don't have the choice. Do you know in my neighboring country of North Korea, you can't move from a city to city without giving Given, being, uh, given permission from the government. And many a times they don't give you permission. So what if you can't go from Beverly to Danvers or to Beverly from Beverly to Ipswich? You're not allowed. That's called prison, no? Yeah. But because of Jesus, girded around our waist, the truth of God's word, we can stand until the very end and give God all the glory and praise because it was he who helped us to stand to the very end. It was he. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. In Ephesians 4, 15, we read, instead speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Speaking the truth in love is so important, it's likened to this. Let me give you an image. Uh, has anybody ever seen a, a train, a locomotive, you know, a choo-choo train? Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen a train uh, that goes off the rails? Yeah. That's called an accident. That's called a disaster. See, what the locomotive is likened to is the, the love that God has for us. Amen? But that love always goes under the tracks of God's pure truth. And when that locomotive of love goes with the rails of truth, it gets to its destination and gets all the passengers to its destination. That's what speaking the truth in love is. It's not just bashing people with the truth. Because you can't get anywhere just with the railroads. Can I get an amen? amen? You need both to get that person from point A to point B. From darkness to light. From hopelessness to hope. From joylessness to joy. From the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, we speak the truth in love. We speak Jesus in love. We speak about his love. We, we live out his love. And that's why I believe Paul has used this illustration of having the belt of truth around our waist. Never forget truth. Never forget Jesus. Never forget what he's done for you on the cross. Never forget the blood of Jesus. Always have that truth girded around your waist. Never let go of it. So that we can stand to the very end. And think about the disorder of not having a belt. And maybe some, uh, some of the men in our church would understand. I mean, not having a belt. I'm wearing a belt tonight, praise the Lord. Without it, our trousers would fall down and it would be very embarrassing. It keeps it all together. The truth of God's word, Jesus brings it all together, gives us the strength. And sometimes our, our men who are, you know, handy people would use your belts as like, you know, you put your tools in there and you put something in. Even tonight, I'm using my belt so that I can clip my microphone onto me. Praise the Lord. So that I don't have to put it in my pocket, right? The truth of God's word keeps that, that buckled in, uh, that security, that security of being buckled into his truth. Brothers and sisters, 
Jesus is the truth. And this is D.A. Carson commenting on John. Jesus is the truth because he embodies the supreme revelation of God. He himself narrates God, says and does exclusively what the Father gives him to say and do. Indeed, he is properly called God. He is God's gracious self-disclosure, his word made flesh. The word became flesh and tabernacled among us. And everyone saw that there was full of grace and truth. Jesus is truth, friends. Jesus is our absolute truth. The word of God is our absolute truth that will keep us from the evil schemes of the world. The enemy wants to deceive you each and every moment. He wants to kind of pull you away. And sometimes it's, it's not even anti-Christ. It look, looks like pseudo-Christ. There's no such thing as a pseudo-Christ. There is only Jesus Christ, Amen. our Lord and Savior, the truth. And how many times in the Bible Jesus tells us, verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth. He will never lie. He will never forsake. And with that truth, girded around our waist, we're able we're able to stand against the enemy's voices that continue to lie to us, continue to make you compare yourself with other people, right? That person is this, I don't have it, so that means I'm, I'm less than. Who says if you have the truth, you have everything? When you possess Jesus, you possess everything. Why? He has given us truth eternal, truth eternal. Never let the truth of God's word depart from you. Put all your thoughts captive underneath the truth of God's word. If it doesn't pass the test of the truth of God's word, then don't accept it. Very simple, isn't it? If it doesn't pass the litmus test of the word of God, the truth of God's word, don't accept it. Even the messages that you hear from this pulpit, praise the Lord, God is granting us great messages only by his grace. But you need to go check for yourselves. Open up the word. Don't just take my word for it. Because we're a community of faith that wants to uphold the truth of God's word and his truth prevails. It's not about me, not about you, it's about him. Yes. And when we elevate Jesus, and when we have that truth girded around our waist 24-7, guess what? We will be able to stand and fend off the enemy when the enemy comes to deceive, when the enemy wants to come and destroy, when the enemy wants to steal from you the joy that only God can give. You say, no in Jesus' name. Even if your situation looks so bleak and so dark right now, the truth doesn't change. That's why we love absolute truth. Truth eternal. Relative truth always changes. Right? It was good yesterday. It's bad today. It might even become good tomorrow. Who knows? Don't trust it. Don't accept relative truth. Accept the absolute truth of Jesus Christ himself, what he has proclaimed himself to be, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. Amen. Wow, what a wonderful truth we can keep in our belts. Yes, keep it girded around me. Yes, Lord, may your truth continue to protect me, to fend off the enemy in Jesus' name. Many a times the enemy will come to you with thoughts, lustful thoughts, greed, comparison, cynicism, all of these things. And you say, hold on, does that align with the truth of God's word? And yes, exactly, Debbie. You say, no, it doesn't. So we discard it in Jesus' name. When your pet dog poops in your living room, hopefully he or she doesn't do that. But when, when it does, you don't just sit there and 
and meditate on what has been done. Well, let, let's just spend a moment to, to meditate on what's been done. It's a little bit stinky in the room, but um, we'll, we'll just persevere that for a moment. Oh. You remove it right away. Can I get an amen? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a dog person or a cat person, so I don't, I'm just using this as an analogy just to help you to get this into your systems tonight. That when the enemy brings you a bad thought, don't just leave it there. The reformer Martin Luther would say this, you can let a bird fly over your head. You can't stop that, it's out of your control. But you can't stop it from nesting on your head. Don't meditate on the temptations and the bad thoughts that come your way. Don't let the what-ifs and the doubts of the world <clears throat> pull you away from the truth of God's word, his truth, Jesus Christ the Lord. And sometimes the belt of truth is what we hold on to in difficult times. We need to hold on to the truth of God's word in difficult times, in good times, in bad times, just to remember. One of the things that I always carry with me is, is my wedding, wedding band. And sometimes when I'm away from my wife, I, I remind myself of the covenant that God has given me. And somehow this little thing doesn't have power, doesn't have anything, but it reminds me of the covenant and the love that God has brought into my life. It's the same thing with the belt of truth, no? Always remembering God's covenant love for me is true and amen. He will not leave me nor forsake me. And as we keep, as we cherish the word of God, the truth, then when the enemy comes, we're able to stand our ground. Brothers and sisters, the day and age that we're living in, it's so difficult to hold on to absolute truth. It's so difficult to hold on to biblical truth. There are far more or less churches preaching through the word to the uh, to the congregation with the word of God. Far more churches are becoming more free in a bad way, which is not freedom at all. It's bondage. But by the grace of God, God has given us a congregation where we revere God's word and ask the Holy Spirit to breathe on us and it illuminates our hearts and it nourishes us and it causes us to be set free because the truth shall set you free. Not relative truth, though. It's the absolute truth of Jesus. Absolute truth. So you don't need to worry about the outcome of the world. God already has a plan in mind, and it's unfolding even right now. Don't worry about the escapon too much, right? Right? Pre-post, pan, what? Don't worry too much. Think about today. What if you die tonight? Where is your eternity going to be? And you place that question to the people around you. And say, what's going to be your destiny if the world ends tonight? And when we have truth as a good around our, our waist, then we have hope. We have strength to stand until the very end. The enemy is crying right now because his tactics are being exposed. But praise the Lord, we need to know his tactics. He wants you to fall down. He wants you to stay down. But by the grace of God's truth, we will rise up today. Rise up today. Maybe you're behind on your Bible reading, you know, uh, 20 days, 30 days. And you're like, oh, I'm just down and out. I need to wait until 2024, January 1st, to begin the plan again. And you might think like that. No. Not here. We may have fallen down, but today we rise up by the truth of God's word. Today we rise up. That's how we overcome. That's how we overcome. And the enemy would love for you to stay down. Love for you to stay depressed. 
love for you to be defeated. But when we have the belt of truth girded around our waist, guess what? Jesus says to us, rise up my son, rise up my daughter, let's go again. I love you and this is truth, truth eternal. Wow, think about this love. Think about this truth that is unchanging. The unwavering, steadfast love of God spoken to us through his word and by his spirit. Cherish it, embrace it, apply it, and live that freedom life to love God freely with all of our heart, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Truth eternal. May it set us free tonight. Let us pray.